So real quickly before we hop into the video, I do apologize for a few jumps that you may see throughout it. What I did is I recorded each clip separately, and when I clicked the record button, it would take a few seconds to actually start recording, which means it missed a few of the words I said in the beginning. So I apologize if it's a little hard to follow along, but with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoy the video. Hello everybody, it is Titanic Project MC, back for the first update video in a little over a year at this point. Um, I sincerely do apologize for the massive lack of content this past year. Um, I would call an entire year of not uploading a big lack of content. Um, I have posted a few things on my Instagram over the past year, but um, I definitely haven't been active really at all. And that really is due in part to not a lot of like things have been done on the ship in the past year. Um, I kind of, for a while, I lost a lot of motivation for anything Titanic related, and I was just f dealing with more like real life stuff and indulging more of my, like indulging myself more in that. Uh, but recently I've been regaining a lot of my passion for Titanic. Uh, it's been slowly coming back over the past few months, so um, I do have a few things to show off today. Not too much, but at least have enough to uh, say it's worthy of an update, an entire update video. So, um, yeah, so without any more stalling, let's just get into it. Um, I do remember that I never showed off this bow. I recorded the clip uh, to show off this completed bow, but I actually forgot to put it into the video itself. So here it is. Um, it's nothing special. Uh, I am really happy with how it turned out. It is um, basically as accurate as, as accurate as it can be. It is uh, a little too um, tall, and that's mainly due to the fact that I needed to fit in uh, a lot of tank top and orlop spaces. Uh, and with doing the actual measurements, with like the bow being or the like the hull being um, 64 feet deep, uh, it made it to where I cannot fit in some of uh, orlop and everything due to the fact that you have to double stack the decks and everything. Uh, because, of course, um, I don't want wood ceilings and all that, so I have to double layer the deck so that we can do both the ceilings and the floors for every deck. And, um, over the course of nine decks, it does play an effect, so I had to lower the draft by six blocks. Uh, so, that was a really painstaking process, because I actually built it correctly the first time, and then I actually, when I went to go and outline everything, it, it hit me that I had to lower the draft because of that, so... Unfortunately, there is that imperfection, but in terms of the actual shape, it is uh, very, very close to how the actual ship looked. Um, I had a, a specific method that I came up with to make sure the shape is as accurate as possible. Um, just to go briefly over it, I modeled the buttock lines in Blender. Um, basically, I traced over the original hull line plans, um, and then I applied the remesh modifier to blockify them, scaled it accordingly, and then basically I copied uh, block by block um, the buttock lines uh, into Minecraft, and then I filled in the lines in between them, filled everything in, and then bada bing bada boom we have a completed bow. So I am very happy with how that turned out, and hopefully this should be the final rendition of the bow, because this is the third bow I created over the course of um, the year and a half this project has been going on. So hopefully this will be the last one. A few things, uh, nothing's really been necessarily added or taken away, it's just I've made a few changes due to some theories popping around. So, uh, first change is I completely remodeled this entire anchor up here because it was horrible, my previous model. Uh, I added the slant to the um, curve on these steel plates right here, and then I also actually made the anchor far better than it previously was because before it was like laying fat, flat on the ground and it just looked really bad so I fixed that and then moving back um, these uh, windlasses and capstans and bollards these all used to be black but um, right now I have them a dark gray to represent that they're unpainted this is still a, a, a working theory um, I'm not entirely too sure about it right now I want to look into it a little more but uh, when one of my friends was looking into the theory that the powered machinery up here on the forecastle was green, 
um, he kind of came up with this counter argument that it was actually unpainted uh, due to some evidence with photographs and the specification notebook and everything. So it's a work in progress theory. It may not entirely, it may not stay. Who knows? I want to look more into it, but for right now, um, I have it dark gray. In reality, although it, this stuff wasn't painted, though, it would actually be black. You want to be able to tell the difference between it being painted black and it being just dark gray. Um, if you look, like, yeah, right here I have the black painted stuff represented with black wool and black stone. Um, in re all reality, this stuff should be the same color because this was made out of carbon steel and it would have been black. Uh, although it was unpainted, it wouldn't have been like dark gray like you would expect steel to be. It was basically black steel. Um, if you look at davits recovered from the wreck made of the same type of steel, they are, uh, basically black. They almost look like they're painted, so... In all reality, they'd be paint. They'd be this exact same color, but I kind of wanted to uh, represent that these are unpainted and uh, this black stuff is painted. So I'm gonna took some creative liberties there, uh, but aside from that, everything is how it should be at the moment. Um, I also changed these um, steam winches. There's a stair missing there. All the little stuff I discovered from going around the ship. But, uh, change these steam wishes, just the paint scheme. Um, I made, I now have them as black with, uh, only the inside of the drums painted green. Um, there are a few ships of the day, of the period, that you can see are painted like this. There's also a colored photograph of Nomadic taken before she was turned into a, a restaurant or any of that. Uh, there's a colored photo taken of her where she has this exact same paint scheme for the windlasses. So that is currently what I have at the moment, as I think that's the most accurate theory. Um, moving down to the well deck, nothing has really changed here. Uh, bollards have changed, but that is it. Oh, and I also added the uh, crane jibs right here, which are the these little arms that you see, which are uh, which move around and swivel to load the cargo into these hatches right here. So that has been added. And we'll go down here real quick. Uh, this has been a space that has recently been built by our uh, project member, um, Kyle. He has been doing a great job with some of the machinery. All of this is a work in progress, but this is uh, under the foxels where we are right now. This is cargo hatch number one, and this goes all the way down to the number one cargo hold. Um, so this is all a crew space. Uh, you come right here. This is a work in progress machinery for um, the capstans and windlasses. Uh, like I said, very work in progress, still a lot needs to be added, but um, we have accurate steelwork and everything, accurate girders according to the original plans, uh, everything else is correct, so we're definitely trying really hard to make sure every little detail is r accurately represented on this project. Uh, so he's been doing a great job with this, and I'll have some more to show from him soon. Uh, moving back, nothing has changed on B deck. Um, I fixed some of the, uh, yeah, last time this stupid wash port right here was messed up because I changed the hull, so, uh, with that, the wash, some of the details got removed, but I added everything back. I changed up the platings a bit as well. Um, I made the combing plates more defined, I guess, uh, because originally they were just bone block and they didn't have the stair right here, so the, to make the combing plates look a little, a little bit more defined, I added in those stairs and I think it looks far better now. Um, same thing applies to ADEC. I, I changed the combing plates, uh, finished the details right here, and that is all that ha has happened right here. We can move back to the ADEC promenade though. As you can see, I have started everything here, but I have yet to finish it. Uh, I have to do all the um, deck house plating, I have to add in all the pipes, I have to add in all the vents, all the deck chairs, all the miscellaneous details like signs and um, light switches and everything, so there's still a lot of details to be added, but um, as you can see I just started working on uh, some of the detailing right here. Is that supposed to be right there? Yes it is, okay. So yeah, and I also did some of the first plating uh, in terms of the... I started plating on the superstructure right here as well. Now you can see bone block, all according to original plans. Um, it took me a while to figure out how to read those original plans, but uh, we got it going, so I'm happy with that. I cannot wait to see the actual, like, the entire superstructure and hull plated. And you can see I started outlining where the strakes are right here, um, but uh, I haven't actually done anything aside from that down here. So I'm happy with how that has turned out thus far. 
boat deck. Um, this is where most of the changes have occurred. Uh, we, a lot of stuff has been added on boat deck, I'd say. I think this is the last update video. Um, I don't think anything's really changed up here. I, I might have changed the bridge wing shape as I do that a lot because um, I always make this a lot less curved than it actually should be. I mean, or more. Uh, actually, I'd say I make it a lot more smooth than it uh, is supposed to be. Um, but in all reality, it was actually a pretty sharp curve right here, and it flattened out pretty suddenly right here. Uh, it took me a while to realize that, but after many trial and errors, it, it finally clicked. So that's the only thing that's changed right there. Bridge has stayed the exact same, nothing has changed. Um, right here, I have finally added some lifeboats. I still need to add the collapsibles and emergency cutters right here. But I at least have these lifeboats done. I also still have to do the aft lifeboats as well. So, still have a few things to do, but um, I at least got the lifeboat design here. Um, I'm also happy with how the davits turned out. Uh, they were definitely a pain to build, but luckily I can copy and paste them. Uh, because I would hate to keep on rebuilding this complex of a design over and over again. But I'm happy with the lifeboats. Uh, in the final map, you can go in them and everything will be... Um, in here, uh, I think, yeah, um, I think on the, either the Library of Congress or the National Archives, there is a, uh, it, like, uh, there's a list that describes every single item in every single lifeboat, so I'm gonna use that to my advantage and fill up every lifeboat with all the details, so that should be interesting to open up the lifeboats and see. Um, there's a chicken, so there it is. Yeah, somebody made, spawned a bunch of chickens on my ship named Albert, so... They're kind of roaming around, so if you see chickens, just don't mind them. Um, unfortunately, they will be slayed eventually. But you will be able to see some other animals and the dog kennels over there, so you can have fun with them. Uh, but uh, what else has changed on boat deck? Up here on the officers' um, officers quarters deck house, the roof has changed significantly. Um, most people, of course... Uh, probably are shocked by seeing this. Um, it is generally accepted that the top of these were the exact same color as the deck down here. They were just uh, like the yellow pine color, pitch pine, whatever. Um, but I have them painted gray, and this is due to a, a theory that Matt Contala uh, proposed. And um, so far I have yet to see really any counter evidence to it, and I see a lot of evidence pointing towards it. So right now, honestly, I'm going to stick with um, this gray painted roof because what this really is this is still a wooden roof but it is painted gray now why it would be painted gray I honestly could not tell you but uh, there hasn't been much I haven't really seen any counter evidence to disprove it uh, one of my friends said that it seems like there are knots in the wood which is like like little patterns in the wood like if you if you look at like wooden planks you may see like little spirals and stuff uh, those are knots and they they seem to be present on the deck, but it's hard to tell if there's any, like, debris or something, or if it's knots in the woods. So right now, there's more evidence pointing towards the roof being painted gray than there is uh, opposing it. Um, it could change in the future, but as of right now, uh, I'm keeping it like this until I see um, some hard evidence disproving it. Um... So yeah, enough with that. Moving aft, uh, the only other thing that's only th well yeah, only thing that's changed here is the deck benches. Uh, they used to have like black um, armrests, but I figured out that, or not that I figured out. Uh, other people have figured out that they were actually bronze. I think bronze or brass. So um, yeah, they're unpainted bronze or brass. I originally thought they were painted black. Um, moving here. There are these holes in the deck that he needs to fix. Uh, basically what these are, um, I'll expl actually I'll, I'll get into this more later on, but you'll understand what uh, why these holes are here um, later on in the video. Uh, the funnel, oh yeah that's a big thing, the funnels have completely changed. In the last episode of the video I showed off the second funnel which had this um, kind of new way of building it with the back being curved and not look looking so plated. Uh, I finally got around to copy and pasting that funnel to every other um, funnel making them unique and rebuilding all the ventilation around it. So all the funnels are complete. I still need to do the rigging, uh, but aside from that, they are all finished. They all have their their piping and every other miscellaneous detail that should go along with them. So happy with how those turned out. They definitely look far better than the previous uh, weird-looking Minecrafty plated look. 
Um, so I'm happy with those. Moving back, I added the piping and stuff to this deck house. Uh, I also added in some details I didn't have before, such as these little stanchions right here supporting the skylight covers. Um, and I don't, I think that should be it for around here. Didn't it do anything to here? Our super getting engine casing has stayed the same. Still need to figure out these, these supports up here because um, they're. It's hard to see like all these uh, these beams. Tank room didn't finish, but I I built one like the physical tank itself and uh, some of the um, beams around the room stiffeners. So I built those. Still need to do the uh, lifeboats right here. Um. I think I had all of this done in the previous update video, nothing has changed, except the sand filter. I finally added in the sand filter, or what is proposed to be a sand filter. It's not fully known, but it, from what it, we can tell, it's a sand filter. And that should be it, really, for all the exterior stuff. Um, I did start on the stern, but as you can see, the stern is still not finished. After all this time, I still do not have a complete hull, but it is in the works. So fret not, eventually it will get finished. I really need it to be finished because I, I want to finish the um, exterior up uh, soon enough so that I can get some sort of map out for you guys. So, But I need to finish the stern of course for that and do all the detailing and I really want to get to plating the hull and making it look all uh, nice and pretty. So I really need to do the stern soon. Uh, I probably won't do a next, another update video honestly until I do have it finished. So hopefully soon enough I will uh, finish that up. Uh, but aside from that, that should be all there is on the exterior. So I will show you guys some of the stuff that Kyle's been working on real quick. Um, so you see, here you can see his boiler design. Um, it looks really, really nice in my opinion. Um, his, some of the stuff he's done is ingenious, like using these barrier blocks and an item frame as valves and a lot of that stuff. It's just it looks really, really, really good. So. I'm, really happy that he's doing all this and as you can see the boilers also have interiors um you can see the morrison tubes how they lead into the uh what is it called is it, it's called the smoke box i think is what this middle part is called and you can see how from the smoke box the uh it will heat up some pipes that have water surrounding and the, the water will, of course, turn into steam, which will lead all the way aft until the reciprocating engines. And the excess smoke will come out uh, through this casing right here, or this uptake, and will go all the way out the funnels. So that's basically how a boiler works. It's interesting because uh, they all have interior, so you can see how they physically work. Um, a lot of things will have interior. The reciprocating, engine, the reciprocating engines will have interior. Turbine casings will have interior. Even the little things like the DC heaters and everything will have uh interior so we're gonna have as many things built fully as we can uh, because we really want it like everybody to be able to go anywhere on the ship and there be something to look at so that's what he's been working on and i will break into the hull real quick to show you some more if it's there yeah creepy minecraft noises thank you so you can see we're inside of the bow right now uh a lot. It's a big mess over here right now just because like when I moved the hull down I had to move some stuff back and it created a big mess so I'm figuring that out. But as you can see here he started working on boiler room 6. Um, everything is a work in progress here. We have to edit some of the stuff about these uh, walls. We have to actually plate the inside of this as well but unfortunately we have to wait until I actually plate the draft to do the interior plating. So I have to do that. I have to add rivets. We have to do a lot of stuff still so... Like I said, very much a work in progress. We can see how they kind of look uh, in place. Um, they look really nice. I love the ambience in here. Uh, you can see we have finally accurate walls as well. I think originally we didn't... I don't, I don't know if we actually ever showed off uh, showed off Boiler Room 6 when we kind of worked on it originally. But we didn't have accurate walls, but we have the accurate paint scheme now. Uh, a 6 foot tall chocolate dado with a stone top. I'm still have to figure out if the Fireman's Passage has a chocolate dado. Specification notebook doesn't mention anything about it, but um, it would make sense for it to at least have some sort of dado, so we'll figure that out, uh, but that is for a later time. You can see he started outlining the uptake casing, which, honestly, probably the hardest thing about Tank Top. Not the hardest, but one of the most tedious things about Tank Top is building these uptake casings, because they're... 
they just you have to figure out the angles of everything and they're just so tedious i would hate doing it myself so like i said i'm glad that he is here to do all the stuff that i would not be able to do uh, and then we'll move over here uh, to show off some of the progress on the double bottom so um, this is a lot of progress i've been doing me and kyle have been working on this together the double bottom you can see it is obviously not finished there's a lot to go uh, unfortunately the double bottom is a big task but we're trying to detail it as much as you can we can, you can see the keel is all built here it has everything from um the plate seams if i can find an example yep here's a joggled plate uh it has the little brackets rivets everything so we're trying to go in as much detail as we can uh, with some of the stuff and you can see we have uh these right here are where the bulkheads are they had unique watertight um watertight beams that didn't have any lightning holes in them so that's what those are and then over here you can see an, an actual complete example of like what all of this will look like once it's actually in uh, so this is everything put together um you see you have a bunch of lightning holes uh it's like basically it's almost like a, a maze going through here like it almost reminds me of a mirror maze of some sort um so you see we have a bunch of lightning holes uh you have all these drain holes and everything it's very very tedious to build this but um it'll definitely be worth it in the long run uh because the double bottom is an important thing in my opinion to actually have in the ship and then you can see uh right here is the watertight um section right here uh, that has uh, more intercoastals so that's definitely a complex task i have to still finish this area as well i had to add in the intercoastals right here and then yeah so i have a lot more to do on the double bottom but we're working on it and um it should definitely be worth it in the long run to be able to look down in here it'll be really cool it honestly is also really cool to see it outside of the ship like this i copied and pasted the the bilge of the ship um out and i'm working on it outside of the ship i'm gonna copy it copy and paste it down there because it's a lot easier to build it outside of the ship and copy and paste it in rather than um, having to work on it with all the stuff that's going down uh, going on down there like boiler room 6 um, it'd be a little more it'd be difficult to work on it while boiler room 6 is being built so it helps a lot that this um, it's outside the ship and we can copy and paste it in and it's also interesting to see kind of the draft like placed outside it's just I don't know, it's very interesting. It's something I would never really do previous before we had Bedrock Edition. So yeah, um, that is that. But now we will get moved, moving on into some interior spaces. Now we will move into the interiors a bit, which I'm excited to show off. So up here you can see we have built the boat deck landing of the Grand Staircase. Still needs um, to be, f or some things need to be added. We need to add in a carpet right here. I have to debate whether or not there's a painting here. Um, there seems to be evidence for there both being a painting and not being a painting, painting so it's a tricky subject, but uh, we'll see eventually. Um, last update video, I had all the panels and everything built in this room, but it wasn't furnished, so it's finally complete. Uh, right here in the gymnasium, nothing's changed. Uh, need to add in the pillars and all the torturous device looking equipment still, so that should be definitely a lot of fun to build, um, sarcastically. Uh... This is the elevator gears room built by Noah. This was not here previously. He did a fantastic job with these. Um, and I guess I should mention Noah is another project member that has recently started building. He is helping me with a lot of the public spaces and um, just a lot of the stuff around the ship. We're basically working together in a lot of the uh, public spaces, cabins, all the stuff like that. And while Kyle does a lot of the tank top and machinery stuff. But Noah built this. Looks fantastic. This is a machine for the pneumatic tubes. Uh, for like to provide suction and air and all that uh little radiator heater and that is all that has been changed on the boat deck uh, so we will move down to a deck real quick um i'm really happy with how this a deck landing landing of the grand staircase turned out this is an example of that rug i was talking about that needs to be added up on the boat deck landing um I re also really do like that these chairs are red now rather than like the normal Grand Staircase chairs like they were previously thought to be. I think it just adds a nice contrast to the room and I really really like it. Uh, moving back to the elevator gears, or not the elevator gears, the elevators themselves. Um, you can see they're built, decorated in the Adam style. Um, I think they look pretty nice. Um, I want to do some research because in all honesty this is based off of what Honor and Glory did. Um, I'm, not, I'm not actually sure what 
color these tiles were. We, def we definitely know that they were a variant of the Turkish bath tiles, but I don't know if it's actually entirely known what color they were. So I may look into, into that myself, see if I can figure something out, but right now um, this is just what uh, Honor and Glory have. Um, right here, this is a corridor that I do not have detailed for some reason. It's a little corridor. I don't even know why I didn't finish that, but I'll detail it soon. Uh, here you can see a, a an actual fully detailed corridor. Don't have any bathrooms or cabins or anything like that, but the corridor itself is detailed. Um, so you can see an example of what a lot of the basic stuff on the ship will look. Uh, ventilating windows right here. Uh, you can see these in other Harlan Wolf ships of the time, and then also on the ventilation plans. So um, we have those in, and I think it's a, that's a neat little detail. I mean, it's not like it wasn't previously known about, but I just think they're fascinating. Um, you can see the cabins are, they have the carpets and everything in, but they haven't been furnished or paneled or anything, so we still need to do that. Um, everything else, you can see we have the illumination signs, or whatever, for the lavatories, uh, that would be right here. This is a steward call indicator, or steward bell indicator, it may be on the inside of this room, um, I'm not sure. Uh, I think I've seen it on the outside of other Harlan Wolf ships, or it was on the, and also on the wreck, I think. But I'm still have to look into it more. Um, right here, you can see what the inside of these skid lights will look, look like. So, um, oftentimes you'll see, I'm gonna break this. You'll see these little portholes leading out, like uh, right against the deck on the boat deck. These are skid lights that provide. Um, natural light and air down to these inboard cabins that don't have a window adjoining them. So that's a really interesting uh, design that I don't think is original by Harlan Wolf, but uh, that's something neat that they did. Um, you can see this one is hidden under a settee. Sometimes they're hidden under some things and then other times they were just out in the open. Like I'll just, I guess I'll just break real quick to show you guys an example of what one looks like when it's not covered by something. As you can see, that one was covered by this settee right here in the captain's sitting room. But if we look at this one, um, it's not covered by anything, so here you can see what the trunk of it looks like. Uh, so that is interesting in my opinion. Uh, but now to get back down to the cabins right here, I'll bother fixing that later. Uh, that should be really all um, there is for this corridor up here. Like I said, basic corridor, but uh, gives you an idea of what um, a good majority of the ship will look like. Moving back, this is the corridor leading to the lounge and the reading and writing room. A very sophisticated corridor. I don't really know the um, the style that it was decorated in, but it was had a lot of complex panels and switchboards and stuff. But uh, it is all represented here. I'm happy with how it how it looks. Um, right here is the reading and writing room, which is one of the first public spaces built on the ship. Um, oddly enough, though, for being one of the first, it was like this was built recently, uh, in November. Um, some things are not fully accurate about it, but um, they're mainly due to Minecraft anomalies. Uh, this fireplace should be centered along this wall, but you can see there's one panel here, <clears throat> then two big panels here. Uh, really, there should be two big panels on both sides, but unfortunately, this is another effect of having to like double layer all the walls in Minecraft. Um, it made this uh, wall right here smaller than the other one so unfortunately it's an accuracy that I just can't avoid and um, it's just one of those Minecraft things that I can't fix so that kind of sucks but uh, there's nothing you can really do about it um, other than that though this room is uh, pretty much accurate we have all the little details such as the steward uh, call buttons um, and also, I had to, okay, so I'm going to explain the entire lighting thing that I talked about earlier, or those little, I'll explain those little holes that you saw on, saw on the deck earlier. Um, so originally, I was having a lot of problems lighting this room up. It was like basically pitch black in here. Uh, I'll show a picture on screen of what it looked like originally. But um, I, I tried to figure out how would I add, like how would I get daylight in this room, because there's no way to actually add in like artificial daylight. But I kind of thought about it, because these ceiling moldings are made out of stairs, and I know that lights, light goes through stairs. So with that being said, um, I realized that if I make these stairs on deck, then light will go 
through the deck and into here because light goes through stairs. So you can see I have up down, upside down stairs and you wouldn't even know from on deck that these are stairs. But a lot of these blocks are stairs and the light goes through them, through the ceiling moldings and into this room. So that's a kind of a, a way I figured out to artificially make the lighting, uh, make daylight in here. And it, it saved me a lot because um, originally when I had even all these lights lit up and I added in a, a lot of light blocks around them, it just looked really bad. So with this like actual natural daylight being in here, it looks far better. And I'm like I'm really happy that I figured that out because it, it really saved me a lot of trouble and a lot of heartaches. So yeah. I'm really happy with how that turned out. Um, all in all, this room is, uh, for the most part, uh, one of my favorite rooms that I've built on the ship thus far. Uh, except, of course, this stupid inaccuracy right here. But uh, I can't do much about it, unfortunately. And moving on to the lounge. As you can see, it's not finished. Um, it would have been if we, there wasn't Christmas decorations. You can hear the chickens up on deck. But the lounge... Um, for the most part, it's complete. We still need to add in all the furniture in the middle. Uh, but aside from that, it's basically done. Most of this was built by Noah. Practically, actually, everything is built by Noah. Um, he did a fantastic job with this paneling. It was quite ingenious, like, how he did it. Because it was, a, uh, it was really difficult to, like, make these panels with just, like, double-layered walls. And not being able to, like, have kind of two different layers to work with um but you kind of kind of figured it out that like you can use the trap doors right here to cover up the white right here and you can also make it look like it's um i guess more detailed so that's how we added in a lot of detail how did this happen hold up you see these stairs are which way is it supposed to be i'll look on the other side okay i'm gonna fix that real quick now the lounge is almost complete. So yeah, um, it's pretty smart how he did that, and it looks really nice. Um, like I said, it works with all the walls. Uh, you can see, even though there's a wall right here, we are able to somewhat like double layer this. I'm really happy with how that looks. Um, he did a fantastic job with all the chairs and like and everything as well. Um, this weathered copper, I think this is weathered copper. It's like a waxed form of the copper. Uh, and slightly weathered. It looks really nice for the pattern that was on these lounge chairs and not like the exact color. Um, only thing I'm not really sure about this room is the carpet. Uh, I know it's commonly accepted that the carpet was just full on, um, like a gold color because I think it was Lawrence Beasley who described the carpet as being gold or not even the carpet he mentioned that the lounge had colors of green and gold or something along those lines and so people took that as the um the seats and everything are green and then the floor is the gold that he's talking about but i honestly think that there's supposed to be some black in this carpet in the lounge because we have fragments from olympics lounge and i'm gonna have to double check this because i'm like i've seen people compare the pattern of a fragment that is supposedly from the lounge to the actual lounge uh, carpet and they match up pretty closely but I want to actually look at it myself and see how accurate it or like how much they match up but basically that fragment from the lounge from Olympic is um, black and gold and I don't really see a reason why it'd be changed from Olympic uh, to Titanic because we know that the chairs were green on both Olympic and Titanic and we can see in illustration illustrations of Olympic that the the chairs are green, but unfortunately in those illustrations you can't see the floor. But we definitely know that the chairs were green on Olympic. And then, uh, we know the chairs were green on Titanic because of the descriptions by, I think, basically two different survivors described, um, the lounge. So, we definitely know that that didn't change between the two ships. So if that didn't change, then I don't think the carpet would change, which means this carpet may be black and gold, but that all entirely depends upon if that piece of carpet that is supposedly from the lounge in Olympic, it, it depends if that is actually from the lounge. And even then, it depends if that was like a different from a different refit or something. So we're going to have to look into that. Um, that was a little rant I went on about. I want to do some research into that, but yeah. Alright, here you can see this dome and everything in the center is a work in progress. Um, 
I built this little electrolo electrolier, electrolier, a chandelier. It's basically a chandelier, but it's electric type thing. Um, it, I think it looks really nice. Uh, it's kind of weird to like try to figure out how to do this, these little dangling crystal things that were hanging off of it. But I, this is the best thing I can come up with. It looks kind of wonky, but I guess it somewhat works. Um, and you can see we're editing some of the uh, ceiling moldings around it. All in all, though. I think this lounge looks really nice. Noah really did an amazing job with it. I mean, look at this fireplace. I, th I don't know why. This fireplace is just like one of my favorite parts about it. It just looks so nice and all the carvings up here. I don't know. He did. He just really nailed it. So I cannot wait to see what he does with some of the other spots on the ship, like the smoking room. Um, I don't have the smoking room built, but I started working on this uh, corridor right here. I accidentally put this revolving door in the complete wrong space. It should be... The revolving door should be right here, where these two blocks are, rather than all the way right here. So I, I was in the midst of changing, and I guess I got interrupted and didn't finish it. So I gotta fix that. As you can see, I also gotta add in the lights and other stuff in this corridor, but I started building that. Right here is a pantry to serve the lounge. Um, and also the the uh, promenade. Um, so moving back, that is really all the interior that has been built. Um, you can see we have stuff still outlined uh, that has been outlined for a really long time. All of this stuff has been outlined for almost since the dawn of this project. So some of these floors and everything may, may need to be changed. Uh, hopefully in the next few months we'll see a lot of new spaces being added. Um, hopefully by the next update video we'll have all of ADEC complete at least. And also a stern because that's the biggest thing I need honestly. But um, yeah. So thank you guys so much for watching this update video. I really do hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, I do apologize for the lack of posts the past few months um, and the entire hiatus I've gone on. Especially considering there hasn't been much to show for that long amount of time that I've been away. Um, hopefully with new project members uh, joining the team and then also um, me regaining a lot of my motivation for the ship, a lot of progress will be made in the coming months with, um, of course, entailing a lot more update videos being uh, posted to the channel. So look forward to that. Um, I really do hope it happens. But in the meantime, um, I hope you guys have an amazing start of your 2022, and I will see you next time.